Hey everybody, welcome back. All right, so in this lesson, we're gonna make the lead melody for our track. But before we get going, there's just a couple of things that are really worth knowing before we actually get into making a melody. Now, one of them is that what we're doing here is kind of what I loosely refer to as being in content creation mode. And it's how most people start when they make a track. So for instance, we mess around, we come up with a few ideas, we've got some drums, we've got a bass line, we'll have a lead, maybe a vocal, and maybe a few other elements and then we'll take all of that content and then we'll make it into a track. So we'll arrange it into a sort of structured song, you know, like verse, chorus, verse, chorus, etc. And the best way to think about it while you're in content creation mode is to always work on the sort of main structure of the song or work on the part of the song which will become the chorus. So the main section and is also the most energetic section of the track. And you're going to see how all of this unfolds as we progress through the course. So you know how to do it in your own tracks, but it's important that you understand the bigger picture here. So you know exactly sort of where we are in the process and how we're going to get it to become a full track. So the second thing that's important here before we get going with our lead melody is just that we want to do a bit of housekeeping. Sounds boring, but believe me, when you have a track with say 30 or 40 different elements in there, and they're all called pattern one, two, three, four, five, etc., and they're all the same boring gray color, you can get lost really easily and it's just gonna slow you down. So we're gonna quickly organize this project. So let's start at the element level in the channel rack. So it's very simple to color and rename things. So I'll just right click on my monster kick and I can just go rename color and icon. I'm just gonna call this kick and I'm gonna click on this little colored tab at the end there and let's select a color. So for my drums, I generally have a sort of yellow color. So anywhere around there is fine. And I do advise that you copy the same coloring. So as you're going through the tutorial, everything is the same as my projects. That's so gonna be easier to follow along. Just click accept. And then very importantly, instead of just clicking off it, you do have to sort of confirm this by hitting enter. Then we can see our kick has been renamed and it's been colored. So that is how you color in a singular element and rename it at the same time. But you can also color multiple elements at the same time. So if I just click drag down to select multiple, then if we go to the little drop down arrow here and go color selected, now you need to select gradient, although I actually want all of these to be the same color. And with the first box ticked, just select our previous color. Now this little sort of palette down here contains all of your recently used colors. So it's got my weird yellow green color. And then I'm just gonna have to select the last box and select yellow. That means the gradient's basically the same color all the way through. And then I just click accept and you can see they've all been colored in. So I'm just gonna quickly rename the hats. So the first one is a closed hat. That's fine, enter. And then I'll just quickly rename this one as well. Open hat, hit enter. And then we just got our baseline to go. So let's right click, go rename and color. So I'll leave it as GMS, but we're gonna call it GMS base top because as you'll see in the next lesson after this one, this is gonna be the sort of top part of our baseline. And then I'm gonna color this in and I'm gonna select a sort of pinky kind of red color. Let's go for something like that, pale violet, whatever, no probs. Hit accept and then hit enter to confirm it. And we can see we got some color now in our channel rack. And as you can imagine, when we got more sort of bass sounds and lead sounds and they're all the individual colors they are going to be much easier to identify when we're looking through the channel rack. So now let's do the same for our pattern section. So obviously we've got pattern one here, which is just drums. So I want to color that the same and also label it appropriately. So just right click, go rename and color, just going to call that drums. And I'm going to select our yellowy green color from the color palette, click accept, and then again, hit enter. And there we go. We can see our drum pattern is now yellow and it's also now yellow in our arrange window whenever we've drawn that pattern in. Now let's go to pattern two. Now this is our baseline. So let's right click, rename and color, call it base top, make it our red color, accept, and then hit enter to confirm. Okay, great stuff. Now the next step isn't 100% necessary, but it's kind of just to make it even tidier, you can actually do the same for these tracks as well. Just for the sake of neatness, I'm gonna do it anyway. And the same with our baseline. 
Okay, so enter, and there we go. Everything's nicely color coded. Okay, so sorry for the delay in getting started, but now we're going to finally get on to actually making our melody. So we want to add another GMS instrument. So I can either add it with a plus button or I can go to our GMS instrument here and just click and drag it to the bottom of the channel rack. And again, we're just going to use a pre-made patch for this at the moment. We probably will be tweaking it later, but that's fine. We'll get to that later. So we're going to click on where it says bases and then we're going to go to pads and textures and it's actually called ghost TE. So just click on it once and you can see the GMS instrument is updated. Now we can close that window and if I audition it, that's the sound that we've got. And again, I'm just using my keyboard here with this button highlighted so I can actually play it on my typing keyboard. Okay, so we've got the sound selected. I can close GMS for now. And I'm just gonna quickly color this as well and name it. So I'm gonna right click, go to, to rename and color. I'll call it GMS lead 01, just in case we add another layer to this later, uh, just so we can differentiate, but that's fine. Click on the color and let's go for another sort of pinky color. Uh, let's make it slightly brighter, accept and then enter. And now, of course, we want to program in our lead melody, but it's super important before we start programming the lead melody that we want to make a new pattern. So if I forget to make a new pattern and I still have our, say, bass top pattern selected and I right click, go to piano roll, you'll see here that we've got all these grayed out notes. So I can't do anything with these notes. They're just in the background and anything that I add while I'm in here will be added to the bass top pattern. And you don't want this as it's gonna make life really confusing and frustrating. So a helpful rule to follow is you want to use individual patterns for each element. Pretty simple. Unless you are working on drums, which will have multiple drum elements to make up one pattern, that's fine. But if you've got a bass line, a lead or whatever, always use a new pattern for that new element. So let's just close this window. And remember, we've got these grayed out notes here. That's because we're in a pattern that's already being used. So if I create a new pattern by going up to here, where it says bass top, click plus. I'm just gonna label this while we're here. Call it lead 01. And I'm gonna color it the same pinky color that we just made. Click accept and then enter. And now my new pattern is selected. When I go and right click, go to piano roll, you'll notice that there are no grayed out notes. So that's a good sign. It means that I'm not in a pattern that's being used by anything else. Now, actually, before I go any further in this window and start programming in a melody, I want to actually work out what the melody is. So again, like before, I just sort of listen to what I've got and I'm just kind of hum along with it or whatever, just kind of play around with notes in my head, come up with a melody. And this is what I got so far. I apologize again. Okay, so pretty simple, but it's a nice little melody. And while I'm here, I'm just going to quickly change this and color it pink, just so we're fully there and we know where we are. Hit enter, so it's all ready to go. And just so you know, you can actually put any pattern on any other track it doesn't matter it will still play exactly the same the only reason I'm coloring these in is just we're going to keep all of our drums for example on one track all of our bass top on one track it just keeps the whole project neat and note as well that when you click on a pattern here it actually sort of activates that pattern so if I went and started go back to the piano roll again you can see I've got all these grayed out notes again which I don't want and for example if I click on one of the drum patterns in the arrange window it activates the drum pattern which I don't want I want to make sure I'm in lead one right click piano roll and then let's get in our melody so it's like da, 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 da. so let's have a play And now I've got my first note in there. I can go back and close this, go to my playlist and just draw that first bar in and expand it so it covers four bars and then go back in. This just means that now I'm gonna be able to hear the beat over the top of it. Just scroll to the end. So it's a bit long, so it wants to go down, 
So, din, 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 din. Got to get the timing right here. Din, 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 din. Okay, it seems about right. Okay, well that sounds all right, not too bad at all, quite like it. Very simple, but very effective. Uh, but it's gonna get a bit boring if it's just repeating over and over and over just the same. So we will actually expand this and repeat it, but we're gonna make like a variation to our second repetition. Don't worry, this will all become clear in just a sec. So first of all, what I want to do is copy over our drums and bass top. So I want that to repeat. So I'm gonna hold Control or Command on my keyboard and select all of those and then hold shift and then click it and drag it to the side now we've got a repeat and then I'm going to just extend my lead so it's covering the full eight bars now double click it to edit it and I'm going to do the same in here so I will hold control or command highlight everything or again you can hit control or command a to select all and then hold shift and I'm going to copy that across so it's repeating from the second repetition now we've got this sort of red line at the top if you want to get rid of that just double click in the timeline now let's just play that through and I can also select as well where I want it to play from just by clicking in the timeline now it doesn't actually show you when you click on it but you can see this little thing move up here so you know that it has actually moved and when you play it will play from that point. It's a shame they haven't got like some sort of visual representation to tell you that you're actually gonna play from there. So let's play it from the beginning because I want to, again, I'm afraid, just hum my last little change here. That's what I got in my head. I've got to get it out. So I'm going to zoom in. I'll just use my mouse wheel and holding control. So go. Okay, I think that's right. So just a couple of note difference there. So, right? Yep. I think this is right. So sorry for my humming. I really do apologize. Okay, super simple, but really effective. That's fine, we're done with that for now. Let's just close that window. So I'm very happy with how this is progressing. We've got a decent drum beat. We've got a nice sort of bass line so far, although we're gonna make that even fatter in the next lesson. Our lead is sounding nice. And although we've got a long way to go before it really sounds like a proper track and it's all pumping and got tension release and it sounds really amazing, we are definitely on the right track. Okay, so that's it for this lesson. In the next lesson, we'll be adding a nice sub bass to our bass line, layering it up, and we'll be getting into some basic effects to make our track work together and sound good. Thanks very much for watching. See you in the next one.